In this lesson, we'll learn how to find the diameter and length of copper wire. This question was originally asked on biologyforums.com, and here is the solution. The question reads, an 18.0 ohm resistor is made from a coil of copper wire whose total mass is 24 grams. We have to find out what the diameter of the wire is and how long it is. To do this question correctly, you need to know a few things. The first thing is the resistivity of copper, and you should be given this value either in a table in your textbook or provided by your teacher, and it is denoted by the Greek letter rho, and it's the following number. What's important is that you understand the units behind each of these values. So for the resistivity, it is ohms times meters. You also need to know the density of copper, and unfortunately, they both use the letter rho. So you need to change one into another letter just for the time being. Let's call this sigma. Just to prevent any confusion. And that is equal to 8.90 times 10 to the power of 3 kilograms per meters cubed. The resistivity formula is shown underneath. And in case you don't know, electrical resistivity is a measure of a material's property to oppose the flow of electrical current. Essentially, the higher the resistivity, the harder it is for the current to flow. So materials with high resistivity are electrical resistors, technically. It's given by this formula, where you have resistance times the cross-sectional area divided by the length of the material. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and start answering this. I'll rewrite the formula up here. Resistivity is equal to the resistance, which I'll replace with 18.0 ohms times the area which we don't know. We're actually going to look for the area eventually because it will help us find the diameter. All over the length, another property that we don't know. I'll use the information that they gave us about mass to help me find the area and the length. And what I can do is take this value, which is 24.0 grams, and substitute it into the formula underneath here, where if I multiply the length by the area and subsequently by the density, which I've denoted by rho, we can then use that information to substitute it back into this formula to help us find the rest. Now, if that's confusing to you, let me show you what I mean. So I don't know what the length is, not sure about the area either, but I do know that the density, which by the way we've called sigma, is 8.9 times 10 to the power of 3 kilograms per meters cubed. You should notice right away that this is in grams and this is in kilograms, and the units need to match. I'll go ahead and convert 24.0 into kilograms so that it matches the density. And that's not hard to do. I divide this by 1,000, and I end up with 0 0.0240. Notice that we still have three significant figures here. Significant figures are important in this question. And this is equal to L times A times 8.9 times 10 to the power of 3 kilograms per every 1 meter cubed. What I will do with this relationship here is solve for A. Then take what I find for A and substitute it into this formula, which we discussed earlier. Now, don't take this lightly because you need to understand how the units all cancel out. So I will divide both sides by L and this number. 8.90 times 10 to the power of 3 kilograms per 1 meter cubed. And of course on this side as well. As you can see, that will cancel out along with the L, leaving us with A on the right side. Now let's try to simplify the left side as much as possible. We have this number being divided by this fraction. That's the same thing as saying 0 0.0240 kilograms divided by L times 8.90 times 10 to the power of 3 kilograms per 1 meter cubed. I wrote it down in this extended form so that you can see how the units will cancel out. Because if you divide a number by a fraction, the fraction here will reciprocate, and this will change to multiply. Your expression should look like this. Now as you see, the kilogram unit will cancel out, 
leaving us with 0 0.0240 meters cubed per L times that number. Let me clean that up a little more. Okay, so I'll take this expression for A and substitute it right into there. Let me rewrite this at the bottom. Now, originally we had this times A. I'll replace A completely with that expression. In addition, I'll replace rho with the resistivity of copper. And that is 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative eight. So I'll replace that with that number. Notice that I've explicitly written down the units because I wanna show you how they cancel out at the very end. I'll solve for L and by solving for L, I've technically found the length. I can solve for L by multiplying both sides by L. This will cancel out this L and subsequently I'll divide both sides by this number where I end up with length is equal to 18.0 ohms times that expression again. And to make things simple, I'll multiply 18 to the top. So I have 18.0 ohms times 0 0.0240 meters cubed over that expression. Length times 8.90 times 10 to the power of three over, remember I divided both sides by that. So I'll write down 1.68 times 10 to the power of negative eight ohms times meters. Now using the same logic as before, when you divide a fraction by another fraction, you should end up with the following expression. You see I've written it down in extended form. And again, you will flip this number where it becomes rather than 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative eight at the top, it then becomes one over that number, and this becomes a multiplication. Notice what happens. This will cancel out with one of these, that becomes a two. Omega cancels out, and we are left with technically meters squared on the right side. We still have an L underneath here, so I'll multiply both sides by L to cancel that out, and I have L squared now. So I have L squared is equal to 18.0 times 0 0.0240 meters squared over 8.90 times 10 to the power of three, that's unitless, times 1.68 times 10 to the power of negative eight, and that's also unitless. We can now go ahead and find out what that value is using our calculator. 18.0 times 0 0.0240, that's the top part, divided by 8.90 times 10 to the power of three times 1.68 times 10 to the power of negative eight. We end up with the following length squared. Remember it's L squared. I'll square root both sides so I'll square root this number. And remember, if you square root meters squared, you end up with meters. Keep that in mind, okay? So I have length is equal to 53.751. 53.751 meters. Now remember, significant figures are important. We started off with three, and if you follow the rules, you should also end off with three here. So we could write down that the length is 53.8 meters. We just answered one of the questions. We answered question B. Now we move on to A. What is the diameter of the area? Well, for that, I will use the relationship here. And we already filled this in earlier. We had the following filled in. So I'll substitute that value for L into here and solve for A. In fact, I already did that earlier. It's right here. So let me go ahead and take this number, 53.8, and throw it into here. That will help me find the area. And from there, I can use the formula of a circle to obtain the radius, and we should end up with our final answer for diameter eventually. So it was 53.8 gets thrown into there. Using our calculator, I have 0 0.0240 
divided by 53.8 times 8.9 times 10 to the power of 3. And that's the area. I know it's really small, but that shouldn't scare you. Let me write that down. 5.012 times 10 to the power of negative 8 meters squared is the area. I'll use the relationship that area is equal to pi r squared. Assuming that the cross section is a circle. I'll throw this number now into here and solve for r. Once I get the radius, I multiply it by 2 to get me the diameter. This number divided by pi. And now we square root both sides because r is squared. That gives me a value of 1.263. Remember, that's the radius. We multiply that by 2 to get the diameter, and it's 2.56. I will stop writing after three significant figures. So 2.53 times 10 to the power of negative 4 meters is the diameter. Now, if you don't want it in meters, you can write it down in millimeters. So from meters to millimeters, we multiply by 1,000. That's 0 0.252 millimeters is the diameter. And there you have it. That is how to find the diameter and length of a copper wire.